And the readings will now be given by Florence from Georgia. The Bible, Psalm. Bless is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Hey guy, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, said the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, said the Lord of hosts. Second Kings. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me. What hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. And he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and shall pour out all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, Go, sell the oil and pay thy debt and live thou and thy children of the rest. Matthew. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they all, and they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Look, and he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? 
Consider the lilies how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Second Corinthians. For I mean not that other men be eased and ye burdened, but by an equality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. As it is written, he that had gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. Philippians But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I will read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures and Prose Works by Mary Baker Eddy. Rest assured that he in whom dwelleth all life, health, and holiness will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Unimproved opportunities will rebuke us when we attempt to claim the benefits of an experience we have not made our own, try to reap the harvest we have not sown, and wish to enter unlawfully into the labors of others. Truth often remains unsought until we seek this remedy for human woe because we suffer severely from error. Take away matter, a mortal mind could not cognize its own so-called substance, and this so-called mind would have no identity. Nothing would remain to be seen or felt. In the scientific relation of God to man, we find that whatever blesses one blesses all, as Jesus showed with the loaves and the fishes, spirit, not matter, being the source of supply. In divine science, man is sustained by God, the divine principle of being. The earth, at God's command, brings forth food for man's use. Knowing this, Jesus once said, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, presuming not on the prerogative of his creator, but recognizing God, the Father and Mother of all, as able to feed and clothe man as he doth the lilies. Spirit is the only substance and consciousness recognized by divine science. The material senses <clears throat> oppose this, but there are no material senses for matter has no mind. In spirit, there is no matter, even as in truth there is no error, and in good no evil. It is a false supposition, the notion that there is real substance matter, the opposite of spirit. Spirit God is infinite all. Spirit can have no opposite. That matter is substantial or has life and sensation is one of the false beliefs of mortals and exists only in the supposititious mortal consciousness. Hence, as we approach spirit and truth, we lose the consciousness of matter. The admission that there can be material substance requires another admission. Namely, that spirit is not infinite, and that matter is self-creative, self-existent, and eternal. From this, it would follow that there are two external causes warring forever with each other, and yet we say that spirit is supreme in all presence. Jesus required neither cycles of time nor thought in order to mature fitness for perfection and its possibilities. He said that the kingdom of heaven is here and is included in mind 
that while ye say there are yet four months and then cometh the harvest, I say, look up, not down, for your fields are already white for the harvest. And gather the harvest by mental, not material processes. The laborers are few in the vineyard of mine sowing and reaping, but let them apply to the waiting grain the curving circle of mine's eternal circle and bind it with bands of soul. Not materially, but spiritually, we know him as divine mind, as life, truth, and love. We shall obey and adore in proportion as we apprehend the divine nature and love him understandingly, warring no more over the corporeality, but rejoicing in the affluence of our God. Religion will then be of the heart and not of the head. Mankind will no longer be tyrannical and proscriptive from lack of love, straining out gnats and swallowing camels. To seek or employ other means than those the master used in demonstrating life scientifically is to lose the priceless knowledge of his principle and practice. He said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Gain a pure Christianity. For that is requisite for healing the sick. Then you will need no other aid and will have full faith in his prophecy. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. But the word must abide in us if we would obtain that promise. We cannot depart from his holy example. We cannot leave Christ for the schools which crucify him and yet follow him in healing. Fidelity to his precepts and practice is the only passport to his power. And the pathway of goodness and greatness runs through the modes and methods of God. Soul has infinite resources with which to bless mankind and happiness would be more readily attained and would be more secure in our keeping if sought in soul. His is an individual kingdom, his diadem a crown of crowns. Reflect this life, and with it cometh the full power of being. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. Infinite mind creates and governs all, from the mental molecule to infinity. This divine principle of all expresses science and art throughout his creation and the immortality of man and the universe. Creation is ever appearing and must ever continue to appear from the nature of its inexhaustible source.